Disclaimer, this is not a bad camera. Uh, this video just exists to point out the annoying issues with it, uh, which I think a consumer should know prior to purchasing it. So, in no particular order, uh, the issues I've found with this device uh, in my uh, two or so months of using it uh, are as follows. Uh, you can see that I've written M and E here, and that's because uh, the main menu you use for uh, setting up your shots and stuff uh, is not really labeled. You just have these dots up the top and there's no real way of knowing which direction you want to go to get to any of the five different screens. So since I default to the exposure screen, I've just written M to know that menu is to the left and exposure is to the right. And I don't really care about the others because they're so annoying to navigate to. And while we're on the topic of uh, exposure, uh, if you set a manual shutter, it will auto gain the iris, which is uh, usable, I suppose. Uh, and if you go to the iris, you can adjust that uh, to get your specific exposure. But if you then go straight back to shutter, it'll forget whatever you set the iris to, which I find to be a bit annoying. I'd rather uh, verify that somehow because now I have to reset my sh uh, shutter again if I want my specific exposure. And staying on the menu system, if we want to use the camera to shoot ourselves or something in front of it, uh, it will remove all information from the screen and uh, you're left with just that. You get the lines you've set, but you don't get uh, any actual information about your settings. You, you can't adjust your exposure, you can't do anything. It's literally just a monitor as if it uh, was connected uh, on HDMI. And uh, one of the most critical issues with this is uh, a bug concerning uh, the microphone input. Uh, so if I were to connect something to the microphone input, uh, you will get that. And that indicates that there's been an error. And uh, as long as that is there, you cannot do anything. I am pressing the record button, but the camera is not recording. And uh, if we flick it back around, we'll find out that it's quite helpful at telling us that an external microphone will partially obstruct image in wide zoom position, and that is in case we use the included shoe adapter. Once you've seen this once, you become familiar with it. So, OK, go away. OK, go away. This screen will pop up every single time you plug in a microphone and you cannot disable it which I find to be incredibly frustrating. The only way to get around it is to have the microphone pre-plugged in when you power on the camera. And, uh, of course, the microphone connectors there. That's not a great place to have such a connector. The camera has support for a couple of custom buttons uh, on the touchscreen. Here I've put them to backlight compensation, video light on and night mode enable. However, if we're plugging the headphones, uh, we will actually get a fourth option there, uh, which you cannot set by any other means than by plugging the headphones in. And you also get to adjust the microphone level uh, because you have the headphones plugged in. Uh, you are not by any other means than by going through the actual main menu allowed to change the microphone level without having the headphones plugged in, which I just think is silly. Why can't you just select to have that button visible there all the time as well. I love having four buttons there. But if I don't want to use the headphones, well, it's gone and you just get empty space instead. And uh, if you are wearing headphones, you better very well get used to this sound because... This sound is played every time you touch the screen and it cannot be changed, and it cannot be disabled without disabling all other sounds. I cannot understand why they've chosen such a long sound, and there's also a considerable lag before the sound actually plays. I'd rather just have a little beep or something. And uh, it is the only sound the camera will make except for the record sound. Which is a VAT. 
in the main menu uh, you can get information about the stuff you're changing. So if we want to know more about our recording formats, we can press the I button and tap there. But if we find one of these which has a long text, you will notice that it takes a very long time to read the entire description which is beyond me since they could easily fit three to four lines of text on the screen. You get the idea. That's just bad design. A minor note, the touchscreen is rather heavy-handed to use. You can't just flick past it and accidentally activate it, but you need to actually press down a bit on it. There's no tactile feedback. It uh, is a capacitive touchscreen, but it, it, it's different than many other devices. I personally don't mind it, but uh, to be uninitiated it does feel a bit weird. A complaint uh, I have about the image stabilization is that it can be very slow to adjust and uh, it basically becomes uh, imp near impossible to use the camera with a tripod if you have the image stabilization on. Because if we turn the camera a bit now, adjust it, it takes the image stabilization a very long time to adjust, which is great for a smooth shots, but uh, it renders it entirely useless for a uh, tripod use. And uh, I have actually encountered times when it haven't actually uh, centered properly, but it's rather stuck itself at a kind of non-centered position. And when I go to move the camera, it'll make a large jump in order to catch up with itself, which is just it, it's not a it's not what you want to see but uh, it does work very well on actual moving shots though so it's a minor complaint it's very easy to disable since you hand uh, since you have a dedicated uh, menu button for it and now it's entirely disabled and the final issue I have with this uh, camera uh, is that it uh, seems to be very picky about its batteries uh, because uh, I have ordered a couple of cheap Chinese uh, uh, copycat batteries which advertise to be compatible with pretty much all the other cameras of this range uh, but if I shove it into this one and I'm not certain if I've just gotten dodgy batteries or if the uh, VX uh, uh, HC VX980 in particular is fussy or if it's got to do, do with the newest firmware or something but if I try and turn it on on this battery just even can, yeah it will turn on but in a few seconds this battery cannot be used because there's something missing in there which is seemingly changed uh, from the previous generation since this battery uh, had good ratings on eBay ah, and that's about it as far as the annoying parts go oh yeah one final thing uh, the included lens cover uh, will interfere with the IR LED which is there so if you have the IR LED uh, shooting you get a pretty much a dark line going about that big on the camera which isn't a huge issue, the infrared isn't super good anyway but it would have been very nice to just see them accommodate that because it it wouldn't take a lot to make that a bit of a better design and yeah I don't like the sound of the internal microphone, It's it has no bass Rather disappointingly, you can't uh, get any real low-range response out of it. Uh, there seems to be a hard-coded high-pass filter on it. Uh, much like on this current camera you're listening to. But beyond that, I like this camera. Happy with my purchase. Good DC plug. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.